Facebook offline conversions improve your conversion tracking by giving you better one day click attribution without the random 72 hour delay. They also give you more detailed breakdowns inside the Facebook ad manager. What that means is you can see breakdowns of your conversion events based on demographics and placement, which you can't do with web events or even CAPI events. So it's a great way to get more insights into your conversions and better data. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Facebook offline conversion events using Zapier. It's really easy and only takes a few minutes. Let's dive straight in. The first thing you need to do is go over to your Meta Business Suite. That's at business.facebook.com. If you haven't already got a Business Suite account, you will need to set one up. Once you're here, you need to go down to Settings. And then we're going to choose More Business Settings. From here, we're going to go data sources and click on offline event sets. Now, what we need to do at this point is add a new offline event set by clicking add and then giving it a name. You can call it whatever you like. I called mine offline event set three. Click create. Now you need to select the add accounts that you want to use with this offline event set. You can select one or more depending on your setup. Click next and then click OK. Now you just need to assign a person from within your business to this particular offline event set. So I'm just going to uh, select myself and give me all of the permissions possible for this event set and click done. Okay, once you've done that, the next step is to go into Zapier and set it all up. So head over to Zapier, which is zapier.com. If you don't already have an account, you can set one up for free. Once you log in, you should see a screen like this and you can click create Zap. Now, the first thing you need to do is set up your trigger. And the trigger that you use will depend on, first of all, the event that you want to track, and second, the backend systems that you use. So let's use an example where you want to track a purchase. You're going to want to select your checkout software as the trigger, because every time someone makes a purchase, they come through your checkout software. So it's the best source of data for these offline events. For me, I use Thrivecart. So I'm going to use Thrivecart, select that one. Now the event that we wanna choose is when somebody makes a purchase. So in this case, I'm going to scroll down and select product purchase. Click continue. Now, if you haven't already connected your checkout software to Zapier, it's going to ask you to do that at this point. Go ahead and follow those steps. For me, I've already connected mine, so I'm just going to choose the account. Click continue. Now here we need to set up the details of our trigger. So you can select the product that you want to trigger based on. So I'm going to click here, select a product. This means whenever this product that I've chosen is purchased, it's going to trigger this event. You can actually go through here and select multiple products if you like, so that this one zap can be triggered every time someone purchases any of your products and then sends that offline event to Facebook. So select the one or more products that you want, go down here and choose any other options. So you can actually specify things like if you only want this event sent back to Facebook when somebody picks a specific pricing option or uses a coupon code. For me, that's not the case. I just wanna send all purchases back to Facebook. So I'm going to click continue and then I'm going to click test trigger. What this does is this pulls in data for you to use to continue on the rest of the zap setup. So we're going to do that, click continue. Now for this next step, you wanna choose the action. And the action we want to take whenever somebody purchases is we want to send that data back to Facebook as an offline conversion event. So we're going to type here, Facebook offline conversions, and then choose the event. So we want to send an offline event, click continue, choose your account. Now uh, we simply choose our Facebook account. If you haven't already connected Facebook to this, it's going to ask you to do that. So again, follow those steps, click continue. Now we simply set up the details for our offline event. So click on your business account, select your particular account, event set. This will be the event set that you set up just a few minutes ago. So you can see I've got mine right here. Now the event time, because I use Thrivecart, it actually has a date time timestamp of the purchase so I can go through and choose that uh, you should have that with your checkout as well most do um, select that and then you simply go through each of these fields and match up the data coming in from your checkout to the relevant field so for email I can go through and click email uh, phone if you've got it select that first name last name and you should simply go through each of these fields and match as many as you can 
The reason you want to do this is because the more data you can send back to Facebook, the better the match rate will be, meaning the more likely it is that Facebook will be able to match this conversion with a user and a click inside of Facebook. So go through and match each of those until you get all the way down here to uh, event name. And then you want to click here and choose the actual event name. So for me, as I said, this is a purchase event. So I'm going to choose purchase. If you're tracking leads or add to cart or anything else, you would choose whichever one is relevant to you. But in this case, I'm choosing purchase. Now the content type here is a product and the value is going to be the value coming in from your checkout software. So it should come in as a field. Make sure you select that one. Now for currency, if your checkout passes through a particular currency, then you should select the value passed through uh, from your checkout. So in this case, I can choose currency. If your checkout doesn't pass it through, then you should enter it in manually simply by typing it in up here. Okay, so now we go down, fill in any other fields that are applicable, things like lead ID, order ID. If they come through via your checkout, you can select them. If not, it doesn't matter to skip those. Okay, now the event status, data processing options. If you need to enter data processing options here because you have specific laws in your country that require you to do so, make sure you do that. Otherwise, you can simply skip that step as well. Uh, if you're not sure what that means, there is an option here that you can click to get all of the details. I won't go through it in this video because it's not super relevant. Okay, once you've done that, simply click continue. Hit test and continue. And once that's done, you can click publish zap and you're good to go. Now I've just shown you how to do it for a purchase event. The next one I will show you is how to do it for a lead because it is a little bit different. So I'm going to go back out of here now and I'm going to create a new event. So I'm going to click create zap. Now in this case, I'm not going to choose my checkout. I'm going to choose my email service provider, which is active campaign. And the reason for that is because when somebody comes in as a lead, they're not buying anything. So my checkout isn't relevant here, but what they are doing is being added to an email list. So I'm going to click on active campaign and you choose your event here. Now you can do this multiple different ways. If somebody gets a specific tag, whenever they come in as a lead, you can choose tag, tag added or removed. Or if they get added to a specific list, you can choose list. So I'm going to, in my case, trigger this based on whenever somebody is added to a list and click continue. Choose your account. So in this case, I'm choosing my active campaign account and then select the list that is relevant. If you chose tag, you can choose the tag that is relevant at this point. So I'm clicking that one, click continue. And then again, we simply test that trigger. Once you've done that, click continue. Once again, going to be Facebook, offline conversions. The event is send offline event, continue. Choose an account, same as before. And now these steps are all very similar. We select our business account. We choose the same event set. Except for here, we are going to have far fewer fields to actually match up. Most likely you're only going to be able to match the email address, maybe a name, and depending on the other fields that you collect in your form, there might be a few others, but most likely it's going to be name and email address. The date and time you are most likely going to be able to pull in from your email uh, service provider. I'm going to search here for date. And I'm going to bring in the date time that they were actually added to my list. That's important because it is going to help with your tracking on the Facebook ad manager side as well. And again, you just go through here, match up the email address and the first name, last name, and any other details that you have. Now, when you get down here to event name, this is another important uh, distinction between this one and the purchase. In this case, you want to choose lead. And in content type, you don't need to choose anything in this case. Value, again, you don't need to enter anything here unless your leads have a specific value, but in most cases, it's going to be zero. Then you can leave currency blank as well. Once you've done that, you'll click continue, click test and continue, publish that zap. And now you've got a zap that will send your lead events back to Facebook as offline conversion events. So you've just seen how to set up two different zaps. One that sends back your leads as Facebook offline conversion events to Facebook and one that sends back your purchases. Now this is going to give you extra data inside the Facebook ad manager. 
But there are some really important things you need to know when you're looking at your data inside the ad manager if you're using offline events. So let's go over to the ad manager and take a look. Once you start tracking offline events, you will see separate columns for these inside the ad manager. You'll also see we have a drop down here and you can select an offline conversions column set that will also show specifically your offline conversion events. Now the most important thing to note here is that when you are looking at your conversions inside of Facebook, if you look at your leads total or your purchases total, it's going to show duplicate events here, meaning it will show all of the leads that were tracked via your pixel or the conversions API plus all of your offline conversion events. Now that will result in duplication because if one lead comes in, it's going to be tracked via your pixel and it's also going to be tracked as an offline event. So one lead will be tracked in your leads column as two. So you need to understand and know how to separate these columns out to look at your data and understand your data properly. So as you can see here, this account has been tracking offline leads as well as website leads for a short period of time. You can see we've got 174 website leads and nine offline leads recorded. So in our leads column, we have the total, which is 183. But we don't actually have 183 leads total. We have 174 leads tracked via website conversions and we have nine tracked via offline and some of those may overlap. So it's important to view these different columns and understand exactly what you're seeing here so that you're not counting the same leads twice. The same will happen with your website purchases. We've got our total website purchases, but we also have our offline purchases as well. And you need to understand that some of those may overlap. So you need to choose one or the other as your reference point. And I recommend using offline conversions in most cases, because that's going to be probably a more reliable number than the website tracking. Now you can actually go into columns here, as I said, and view just offline conversions. And you can see just your offline leads and offline purchases if you are tracking those as well here. Or you can go in and customize your columns and this allows you to actually track unique purchases. And this is very helpful. So if we type in purchase and we've got our purchases event here, we can track our total, but we can also track unique. And that comes in really handy. Because now instead of having to either rely on our offline conversion column or our website conversion column, this will actually tell us which ones were unique, meaning we have no overlap. So by selecting unique purchases, we can see exactly how many purchases we had without having the overlap or the double counting that comes with using offline and website conversions. Now, unfortunately, we can't do that with leads and with all of our other conversion events. It's only with some, but thankfully for purchases, which is our most important one, we can look at unique events. Now, the very last important thing to do is if you haven't done this already, make sure you sign up for my newsletter the link is down in the description. Every week I send out an email that helps you become a better Facebook advertiser and a better digital marketer. So if you're not on the list already, make sure you sign up for that. And finally, while we're on the topic of conversion tracking, if you haven't set up the conversions API yet, make sure you watch this video next where I'll walk you through how to do that really quickly and easily as well. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.